Hi, I'm Sean. And I'm Adam. And this is Sasquatch. This is our fourth episode, our fourth attempt to enter the wilderness of Bigfoot cinema and see if there's anything out there uh, worth seeing. On this episode, we'll be covering The Legend of Bogey Creek from 1972. So we, we hit a movie from 2002, and then a movie from 2005, another 2005, and now we're going all the way back to 1972. Yeah, and this movie feels like a whole different world <laughs> from where <laughs> we've been in the past. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was strange going from those three very similar films and getting something like that felt just different. Um, there was, it's just different in every way, really. That day in the store, Willie Smith didn't believe me when I told him about a wild, hairy creature in the woods. He believes me now. Barely any real plot here. This movie is, is played out like a documentary. This is Falk, Arkansas. I grew up here. The population was about 350 when I was a boy. It still is. Um, it's kind of a... It's like a faux documentary. Yeah. yeah, like they'll they'll do interviews with people, and it'll either be real people or locals portraying real people, and then they'll film like reenactments of their encounters with Bigfoot. Say there ain't anything over there. Well, there was. There was. Oh, there was. There was. That's what we call that. takes place in Falk, Arkansas? Falk, Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and, and it is, uh, they actually give a nice little explanation. Um, it is definitely a small community. They kind of allude to that when they explain it. But Yeah, 250 people. Yeah, and it kind of plays out because as you meet these people, you keep meeting people with the same couple of last names. <laughs> it's the crab trees. And the wall ravens. <laughs> yeah, there's no singular... Them one or main group of characters that are like encountering Bigfoot throughout like it even the narrator of the story is like a little kid in the opening bit uh -huh. and then at the end of the movie you see the adult version but I don't think he's in any of the middle section like he's just like describing his initial like I heard these spooky noises and you know as then other people started hearing them yeah he, he's not in it physically although he talks when they bring like the dogs in he talks about how he was there for that you remember I think seeing they, those dogs do they show a picture of him at that time I think maybe at one point um, I don't remember that I thought they did but so it's very episodic yeah and it'll, like hop around it does span like isn't there like an Probably eight year about a gap? decade, yeah. It's like an Maybe eight year gap then. at one point. So if it's going from the little kid at the beginning to the adult man yeah. at the end. Maybe it's, twenty years. Yeah, twenty years of, of local legends and stories and encounters. Which are real. This I mean the the legends and, and stories are. That that yeah. you looked into it and that place is real. As you accumulate more and more encounters, the the film starts positing more direct information about it at some point they're like yeah. we always traveled the creek so yeah. always in this creek and you're like how do you know that he became more violent after this time or yeah. like or uh, they're they say at one point that like oh he's he's getting angrier because he's alone he's the only bigfoot out there so he's getting like it's driving him mad and i'm i'm like why do, why do you assume that he's the only one yeah how are you telling me that you can tell them apart and, and this is the, the same one. If you're in the woods and you see a deer like 200 feet away and it runs away, and then eight months later you see another deer, do you just immediately assume it's the same one? These people, I think, do. Yeah. I mean, it's a small town, though, so maybe. <laughs> it's more, I think it's, yeah, it's a small town. It's like a small county. Maybe it's a small there. forest. <laughs> so there's not really a, a plot to, to dig into because um, it's all just these various encounters and some of them even seem to contradict each other um, yeah so what were the episodes what were the different stories that we heard there was the, there was the girl the, with the window yeah the, that was like the was, mom and the daughter and the baby that yeah. were in the house and they like see the phallic monster like walking towards their house i don't think it really does anything it, oh no that's it, he kills the kitten 
Well, a kitten dies. Yeah, she lets the little kitten outside, and, and like, they hear the roar, and they're like, oh, no, what's going on? They run outside, the kitten's dead, and, like, somebody's like, he died of fright. Yeah, <laughs> and if the kitten died of fright, is that on Bigfoot's conscience? Is Bigfoot know. responsible for that? Well, he's responsible, supposedly, for killing some other animals. They talked to a guy who, like, was, like, a pig farmer or something. Lost two prized 100-pound hogs. Yeah. So we're, we're, you know, very, at, no people at, get at killed. At one point, they say that they start blaming every animal that's found yeah. dead on, on him. So, like, even within the, the world of the movie, supposing that he could be real, like, these people are in a panic kind of beyond at, at a certain point. It's after the eight years that he supposedly disappears, he comes back. And they the think vengeance. that because people were shooting at him. <laughs> There's that one guy at the beginning who's like, uh, he sees the Falk monster in the creek and like aims his gun. He decides not to shoot because he's like, I couldn't quite tell if it was a person. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, if it was, that would have been a problem. So yeah. I just let it go. But I kept thinking, there's just a chance. Might be a man. And if I'd have shot that thing, it turned out to be a man. I'd have had to live with it the rest of my life. And I was like, yeah, that guy, that guy makes sense, you know? Because it probably was a person that he saw in real life. I think, window. I think what it is after that window of time, I think that's the legend, you know, in real life. I think that could be the legend kind of, you know, doing what legends and myths kind of do, folklore kind of does, where it'll kind of like get buried and then rediscovered, and yeah. then it'll kind of take an upswing again because the stories are spreading, people want to believe it or, or you know, are just hearing it for the first time, so now it's in their head and they can like... Yeah, start I like to, the, to believe it again. I kind of feel like that's why it becomes more violent. It's just, it changed with the times. Yeah, as the film progresses and you get past, like, one generation's myth to the next, it goes from, like, we heard these spooky sounds at night and we thought we saw something through the window. And then years later, when you get to, like, people that are newer to the community, and they're like, oh, well, Bigfoot, you know, like, broke my window and reached through the window and tried to yeah. grab me. yeah. And it's strange. It's like shaking our trailer. And like, yeah. we broke all of our stuff outside. And it's like, well, you know, 10 years ago, people were saying that he was just like. Walking around. And roaring and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's less about the monster and more about, like, Bogey Creek, the community, and how all these people have, like, turned this myth into something that helps define them. It's something they can blame their problems on. It's something they can talk about together besides just hunting. Thank you, Mr. Willie. Really? My mom wants to, me to ask you, would you come down to our house? There's some kind of wild man down there in the woods about the creek. Because it seems like beyond the monster, like hunting was kind of the, the, the big tide of the community. Everybody was hunting things from school. What, what all, they had a list of things that they were hunting at one point. In, in conversation on the fish they've caught, or the duck, quail, squirrel, or deer they've hunted. Fishing and hunting take up a lot of almost everybody's time. I bet they hunt squirrels there. I'm sure they do. I had my roommate in college hunted uh, squirrels. Yeah, it's def Boggy Creek's definitely not uh, an upscale community. This is a poverty-stricken way. Not out to say the that only poverty-stricken people hunt squirrels. I think I think they do. Well, I don't think a lot of rich people are hunting squirrels. So yeah, you get a lot of different episodes in the story. Um, the longest one is you get the two couples that move into that house together and they mm -hmm. start getting into Bigfoot stuff the first night. Like it's right away. And I like that they include that and they also include like somebody like Herb Jones who's like I've lived deep in the woods for 20 plus years and there I've never seen anything. Another thing People always ask me, have I seen the folk monster? Now let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing. I've been living here in these bottoms for better than 20 years. I ain't never seen or heard no monster. And then these young people move out there first night. Exactly. Like, oh, it's got to be gotta be bigfoot that's out there it's it's the familiarity with the like area if you if you move next to the woods or even a new woods that you're not familiar with like you're gonna be way more likely to think that you're like 
not recognize like, because you're not going to recognize it right away. You're not going to no. know like, oh, that's that tree over there. It sometimes like rubs against this other tree and it makes this noise. Like you're not going to know that if you've lived there for 18 years, you probably know that. Well, for the most part, the recreations like will just play out as the person telling them probably said it happened. Um, but sometimes the film will sprinkle in a little like doubt. Like when the two couples get the sheriff to come out to, and they're like, Bigfoot broke through the window and tried to grab us and was shaking the doors. And the sheriff like immediately looks down. He's like, we've got a panther living under the house. You mean a panther's been living yeah. under the house? That's what it is. It's a panther track. That wasn't any panther we shot at, Constable. You will bet on that. Well, well that's what that track is. You keep this shotgun, and this light, and these shells, and, and then if you need me, will you come at me? Okay. It's like I can tell. There's definitely a panther down here. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, no. It was it was Bigfoot. We're telling you. And he's like, well, you should probably deal with this panther. Either yeah. way. Because <laughs> it's definitely living under there with the cub. So, um, you know, and he kind of leaves right away. He's like, all right, keep this gun. You probably. How many calls do you think that sheriff's gotten about the folk monster? I don't know. How many people live in in Falk? Uh, they said 250. 250. So they probably don't have a ton of police. No. And, you know, whatever sheriff is there has probably been there for a long time. So <laughs> probably a lot of calls that man's received. Um, my favorite, probably not the same guy anymore. But My favorite reenactment section was with the three girls that were, like, having a sleepover. <laughs> and they're like having their like brushing each other's hair and having like Arkansas 70s girl talk yeah they were having a button party <laughs> button party they were having a button party yeah maybe that's a 70s girl thing or maybe that's just like a country girl thing I don't know what that is but that is not the party that I want to go to if anyone knows what happens what goes down at a button party you sew buttons that's what they were doing that's what it is yeah they're sewing just, buttons what do you sew buttons on like a is it, like it looked like those weird, they were sewing buttons on more of those same, like, things they were wearing. The, like, nightgown looking things, or maybe they were dresses, I'm not really sure what they were. Well, they are like, sewing buttons, and they're, like, drinking 70s Coke bottles. <laughs> they, didn't act, they didn't actually ever get the Coke. Yeah, they, they just, did. They did? Oh, yeah, oh. she came back with three big old glass Coke bottles. Nice. And so they start telling their story, and at one point, one of the girls is like, oh, what if it's just the boys outside? And they went, and it's like, well, they all went up to that game. And you're like, they all went up to the game. So it, could, it couldn't be any of them. This movie doesn't have a lot of, like, actors in it. It's either real people giving the interviews, and then uh, they'll get... Even, I think, the actors they did get were just locals. That like One, one guy played his own relative. I think it yeah. was James Crabtree played Fred Crabtree. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's, that'll probably work. So there's not as much performances as much as you're just getting to know these locals. Um, yeah, and the stories that they you know have heard or are telling about uh, this monster, this Bigfoot creature that they've seen. Uh, I definitely like loved Herb Jones. That was yeah, the best part. He's the guy. He lives in a camp out in the woods, basically. It's not a camp. I mean, he had like a structure. He had like a little cabin house thing there, didn't he? Here an old crane. Fries over every day. Looks at my place. I don't know what he's looking for. But yeah, he's a delightful part of the movie. He gets visited by Travis Crabtree, who has his own theme song here. Yeah, the, the Travis Crabtree theme song was a, a wonderful surprise. Yeah. It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Travis Crabtree, wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom. And then he goes, to, he like, he's just this old guy that lives out in the middle of the woods. But it's funny because he's one of the only people that doesn't believe in Bigfoot. At all. Yeah, he's just like, I've lived out here for years. I've never seen any monster. Like, but... Like they threw it's, in, they were like, just so you know, he's limping because he shot his own foot off on a boating yeah. accident. Uh, and he, he 
crawled to the, like, got himself to a hospital, <laughs> even though he lives, like, way out in the woods, and nearest hospital's hours away or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the movie's really trying to be very scary. It's not really trying to, like... Not at all. ...jump scare you or give you nightmares. It's more interested in just, like, recalling all these fond memories. So it has, like, a hazy dreamlike quality throughout it it's a very relaxing comfortable movie there's always yeah. like some I would not, easy going music playing on um, I would not put this on as like your like you know your Friday night feature I don't think that no. this is what you want for that you want to watch this this is a Saturday morning yeah movie. some cereal get some cereal with this movie that'll work it'll work and have a big breakfast some of that doesn't Bigfoot make pancakes? Aren't there like Bigfoot pancakes out there? Aren't there like Bigfoot pancakes out there? Aren't there like Bigfoot pancakes out there? What? There's so let's talk about let's move to the execution. So okay. this movie was made by Charles B. Pierce, um, who uh, was m- more prevalent in the seventies. I think he made a few things in the eighties too. He also made. Um, the Town That Dreaded Sundown. He also made The Town That Dreaded Sundown, which I really like that movie. And it has a very similar kind of like fake documentary feel. Also based on uh, something that really did happen. Yeah, the Texarkana murders. Yeah. Um, which, coincidentally, not that far away from here. They talk yeah. about Texarkana when they're explaining where uh, Falk is. So, I, I don't, or do you know if he's, he is? I maybe believe he from is from area? Falk. I think he was a traveling salesman were a salesman of some kind from that area that like grew up with this legend and had heard these stories his whole life and scraped a little money together and got some high school students to help him and decided to make this like uh, what do you call a a collage or a it's kind of like a collage yeah it's like a collage of memories of just like growing up with this story Uh, it's not really meant to scare you or freak you out it's just like a loving you know, retelling of like you know this is this is what this area is like this yeah. is how we you know this is our monster I think the most interesting way to view this movie is is as kind of a meditation on like local folklore so I think it's definitely going to be more interesting for people who like this one I said you know in the first episode that that's something that I'm interested in with this series this one this one is nice for that. I'm glad that this one actually tries. I, I saw to, this movie to have a good take on the the legend side of it, and not yeah. necessarily like what it would be like if Bigfoot like ripped off your arms. And there's stuff here that's applicable to you know all sorts of different kinds of legends. You could have a, a movie just like this for all sorts of different folklore, which is you know probably you know why that other movie feels so similar to this. I'll say this movie looked really nice. It did. There's some great shots of nature here. You get some fun animals. You get some great, like, beautiful, like, landscape kind of scenes. More so than just the lack of plot, I really liked that this movie was a relaxing, easy-on-the-eyes experience. There was no unnecessary, like, editing that would scramble the screen. Right, no Bigfoot vision. No Bigfoot vision. That was nice. You know, there's nothing... Nothing weird or like silly like that to like make you forget the story and be like, oh yeah, I'm watching a terrible movie. Instead, it's just like really, it's like a lazy river ride. You're just kind of floating along down the creek, looking at different things as you pass by, and you're like, this is nice. This yeah. is nice. I don't know if I want to live there, but it's nice to go through the the ride. That's what this movie is. It gives you all the fun of the southern, like, woods, wilderness, but you don't have to actually get your feet dirty. Yeah. It's it's one of those rides that you go off, and you're like, I'm not going back on that ride again today, but, like, <laughs> next time I come here, I'm, I want to go back on that ride, which coincidentally movie, is what we're going to do, it's right? It's the Viking ship at King's Island. That's what this movie is. It's the Viking ship. The Viking ship? The boat that goes... I was thinking it was the, the Lazy River, although that, that has the jets. That's the water park, though. So, yeah, it looks great. It doesn't look like it was incredibly expensive or that they had to, like, go above and beyond. They just found a really pretty area, and they got there at the right time of day. And 
you know, the footage is like kind of fuzzy. It does feel like a, a made-for-TV '70s documentary. I always feel like that footage is warm, though. It always yeah. makes me feel warm. I don't know if I like would kind want of old fuzzy footage. I don't know if I'd want a Blu-ray of this. Like, I know they. I think two years ago in 2019, there was a remaster of this that came out that I haven't seen. Um, but I'm like, I don't know that I need like a crystal clear version of this. I like the hazy, dreamlike quality that it has because that's that helps sell the like the reenactment scenes where you're like, we're pretending this is real, but we know it probably didn't happen. Well, I don't the, hate the legend is real, and it's but it's hazy. It's a memory. I don't hate the idea of like checking back in with this and doing like another more modern one. Yeah. Yeah. You'd like so to like, see the story go on? I would, which I, it, it, that's actually what our next film is, right? Is, is well, there just are another Boggy Creek. multiple Boggy Creek films. There is a sequel called Return to Boggy Creek. Oh, is that what we're watching? No, we're going to cover that another season. Okay. So, let's talk about the film's overall value. Okay. Um, where does this movie stand for you in the Bigfoot genre? I think this movie's important. Important in the genre. In, in the genre. I do. Because we're seeing, we'll get more into it in the Bigfoot breakdown, but we're seeing some breadcrumbs of some of the things that have seemed to be kind of mainstays, even in these later, like, killer Bigfoot movies that we're getting. Yeah, you can you can see influence from this on Definitely. the previous films that we covered. Definitely. What are the influences? We've got things like Bigfoot standing in the background. Leering through trees. Leering through trees. <laughs> I mean, that sounds funny, but that's happening in a lot of these movies. Oh, yeah. That's something he does, and... step right out in plain sight right right out there in front of me even in modern like folklore when people see him he's walking around he's yeah he's kind of creeping yeah that's kind of what creeping he does around. so yeah i i think i knew it was a cult classic before we watched it i'm happy to yeah. discover that yes it is in fact a fun like cultural slice of pie that i'm glad that i own i could see myself throwing this one on a lot easier than some, some of the other, other ones, yeah, which is weird because sure. I'm the guy who wants. I want the slasher foot. I want Bigfoot out there murdering kids, ripping them apart. But all we're three for three on those, just not being satisfying. And right, this movie and this this for might what as well was, be a kids satisfying. film. Like it's totally like family friendly, and it was great. It was just fun, entertaining, and uh, I yeah, again, I don't know that I was like super satisfied with the Bigfoot itself. We'll get into that in the breakdown. Yeah, I feel like I, I don't want to give it like too high of a rating because it does feel like really loose and uh, kind of minor in, in a way. Mm -hmm. Like there's just, it's fun to hear, hear about this legend, but I don't know that it adds up to a whole, whole lot. Mm -hmm. But it was so enjoyable that I feel like I have to give it, uh, I'm going to give it four big feet. That's my four rating. Big feet. I'm giving it four big I'm feet. I'm going to give it... Three and a half. Three and a half? That's yeah, yeah, fair. It just, I, it's not I my new know. favorite it, it movie. It didn't teach me anything new, because we've kind of seen those those aspects of Bigfoot in the previous things. It's interesting to see that, that this might be something that a lot of future movies drew from. But Yeah, I do. I do think it's uh, definitely left a big stamp on the genre. Um, and it's the movie I, I see, like, you know, like I got the shirt that I got before we ever watched it. I just thought it was an objectively nice shirt. It's uh, a cool design. The poster. I'm really glad cool that I didn't poster. watch the movie and end up not liking it because then I'd feel weird about having the shirt. Sasquatch. Welcome to the Bigfoot Breakdown. So, what did Bigfoot look like in this movie? I, I feel like I, I said it a little bit earlier I think but he looks a lot like uh, what you would expect him to look like I guess he looks like the the quintessential like famous image you know yeah, he always the, the there's that famous footage of him like supposedly walking through that yeah river. he looks like that yeah you always see him kind of in the distance or like a part of him you see like an arm here or like a shoulder there but he's never you never really get a good look at the folk monster no um but that that's almost works in the film's favor and that's also where i don't know that i want like a blu-ray remaster of this because i you don't, don't want to see, see that better <laughs> i don't want to see like the costume you know because it's clearly mm -hmm. just like a, a guy in a suit i don't he didn't look bad he didn't blow me away but he looked fine you yeah know? fine um, not really scary, just there. Some of the habits that he has in this movie uh, were interesting, and I can see where they 
maybe um, you know informed what happened in later films. We've got the fact that animals are like afraid of, of him. They'll leave for he, good reason. He kills animals. Uh, he he supposedly you know ate some pigs, pigs and some chickens. Yeah, we actually have dogs. a diet in this movie. Bigfoot. Yeah, I don't think he just murdered the dogs. He like mashed them up because oh, I think they were okay. hunting him. But like pigs, chickens. Uh, that kind of stuff. It seems like that's what Bigfoot's like going after. I, I think Bigfoot probably was really happy when he got those two hundred pound hogs. That had to last a minute. Maybe uh, they say Bigfoot's about seven feet tall in this film, which is uh, kind of on the shorter end of the big feet that we've run into in these movies. Um, he's got reddish brown hair. Yeah, reddish brown hair, and that's one thing where like it didn't look that red in the movie because he's always like you know far away far away but I'm like ah, who, who who said it was reddish you know I I don't like the idea of a red haired Bigfoot I mean I'm I'm fine with it we've only seen black haired Bigfoot so far I feel like we've seen brown did we see brown yeah in, Takahe uh... was brown okay Takahe was brown uh, they they posit that Bigfoot has three toes in this, and they that I is guess, a little strange. Yeah, there was a footprint, and I guess I believe that the foot people of folk or Falk, I, folk are people, I guess the people down there they they've seen these footprints, and they like to say like, oh, it, it must be a three toed animal. At one point, they're even distinguishing that it can't be a gorilla or an orangutan because of the feet. And I'm just like, I don't... If I saw that footprint, I would assume that, like, it must have been walking weird. Because what large, seven-foot-tall animal has would have three toes? Three toes, yeah. Like, you take... There's the given, there's the sloth. Take that sloth aside. What animals do you know that have three toes? Well, there used to be giant sloths. Bigfoot yeah. had, like, a call in this movie. Like a... Yeah, he did, he did have like a roar kind of. Welcome to Statsquatch, where we crunch the numbers. So, in this film, The Legend of Bogey Creek, Bigfoot appears for 1 minute and 31 seconds. Not a uh, huge amount of time, but he's not the real focus of this film anyway. This film actually has no deaths in it whatsoever. Once again, that's not really the focus here, so that's why yeah. we're seeing no deaths except for the one cat that was afraid and scared to death. That's really the only body we actually saw. There were some pigs that were killed, some other stuff like that. But no human death, no on-screen death, nothing like that going on here. This film takes place in Falk. Falk is way down in the southwest corner of Arkansas where it joins Texas and Louisiana. If you've ever driven from uh, Shreveport to Texarkana, you've driven right through Falk, whether you knew it or not. In this film, there's only one Bigfoot, a particularly lonely one at that. Some people posit that's why he's doing all of the things in the film. Thank you for joining us. So join us next time on Sasquatch as we dig into the 2010 film, Bogey Creek, which I'm assuming is a remake. We'll, okay. have, we'll find out together. I hope it's just like a more recent check-in on the legend or like a new you know, take on like how we view legends. I will say that you showed me the cover and I... Uh... <laughs> Poster. I'm a little worried, a little but I've worried. seen I've seen bad covers before that that you know have come out. It, I'm just afraid that we're gonna watch it. It's not gonna take the documentary route, and it's just gonna like totally spit in the face of this movie. So I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Even if you didn't like the video, you should, could still do that. It doesn't affect you in any way. Um, and we're asking you to. Yeah, it helps us. Yeah. So just to go ahead and hit that button down there, and uh, feel free to pass this along to some of your friends, too. Because you had to watch it, so they might as well. You know, and I'm, I'm out of here. I'm going to drive. He says I'm going to drive around and take a look. And you're like, what are you going to look at? You're on the road driving. He's, not gonna <laughs> He's going home. Yeah. <laughs>